anti-airs to catch him lacking, right? Hey, what is up guys? It is Lost Griff. Welcome back to another video. The ultimate fin guide. This is going to be incorporating multiple different guides I've learned from other fins because I've watched pretty much most of them. Um, and also I'm going to be incorporating every single thing I've learned and compiled in these past 200 or about 300-ish games I've played of Finn. Um, and yeah, I've been pretty much just maining him for the past like week and a half, two weeks, just playing the absolute hell of him every single day, trying to bring you guys an amazing guide. Now, to give some credibility here, I am a top 3k Finn, um, but I've been climbing every single day. I started all the way from like 3 million with this character and got all the way to 3,000. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how I did that today. I'm gonna show you guys all the tricks I learned in the process of picking up this character. And I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of different combos you wanna know, you might wanna know if you're getting into this character. So the first thing be showing you is just his most important moves now his most important moves are this move the his neutral attack where he holds his like where he holds his sword of pie this is one of the best sword fighter moves in the game because it has such a disjointed hitbox literally if you're inside of them and they're jumping it it will hit them anywhere in the air like let me show you what i mean like any of the sword travels which is a huge amount of space it will hit so it's a great way to cover not only slightly behind you because it'll hit like above you and slightly behind you but also it covers directly in front of you it's kind of crazy one of the things i'm surprised most people don't know about on this character is that as you move um you actually charge your attacks so if i'm moving around i'm charging my high five so let's say i keep moving around i'm still charging my high five the other thing you should know is that speeding up is such a good thing to do on this character so the more you move around efficiently, um, the more your moves will charge. One of the best ways to charge an attack, if you, let's say you're on the edge here, right? And you know someone's gonna recover low, you can kind of just dash dance it and it'll charge it a lot. So get used to using strongs and, and dash dancing with them instead of just like trying to move straight towards someone like this. So if you know someone's gonna be in a certain position, you can, you know, kind of catch them off guard. They don't really know what you're doing. As, as easily because you're not just like fully running at them. So try to learn how to dash dance with your strongs and it'll charge them a lot easier before using them. And also this will generate a gem if you use the perk on the, on the house. Just know that just, just because you're holding in this position for so long does not mean that your thing is charged. There's this up strong which is also really good, does 10% and sends you a gem if you have the perk you're, uh, that you're supposed to run, which is insanely good. More on that later. You want to know how to use this up strong and how to space it correctly because it does a lot of damage and it's a great way to start combos. More on the combos later. I'm just trying to show some good moves here. You also want to kind of throw this move out a lot because they added something to this attack which is really OP. Look at what it does. It does 20% fully charge and not only that it puts a little spike out that is insanely good for pressuring people. For example if you know someone's about to approach you you can just throw that out there. It does a free 8% damage. It's really good. Really really strong. So try doing that. You also want to know how to consistently throw out his nair and his forward air. It's up air as well. All of his aerials are really strong. So know how they work. Know how to space them. Because they're all really useful for specific scenarios and specific combos. So make sure you learn how to use those efficiently. Because in certain matchups, aerials are key to winning them. Another thing I'm going to go over real quick. And I have a video specifically about this if you want to know the combos you can get out of this. And also just the applicabilities of it. But basically you have a projectile called the gem. It is a hundred coins um, and can teleport you instantly to your opponent and also can work as a form of damage. So if you throw it at them, it does about 3% on the ground and 2% in the air. The gem will double bounce them, so they'll be in hit sun for much longer than other projectiles in this game. So you can throw a gem at them, fake the teleport, and then they'll still sit there and dodge, right? And you can just throw out a forward air or throw out a nair and try to start a like a, a small string out of it. Often whenever I get a, a projectile gem in, I'll get like a good 20% um, out of it, or at least 10% out of it, which is really solid for 100 coins. So make sure you know how to manage your coins and do not spam the gem. It gets so predictable and I've caught myself spamming gem and lost games because of it. Make sure you know how to, how to, how to correctly pace using this, this move in specific. And again, there will be a guide specifically on that. Highly recommend you bind a grab button for the gem because in, uh, pressing the hit button can sometimes miss input and that kind of sucks. So try to grab it. Try to bind a grab button. And again, Apple has the same properties except you cannot teleport to it. And it's basically the exact same properties as gem, but instead you cannot teleport to it and it does about the same damage. So 
Let's say I have a combo I'm starting. Lunge is one of the best ways to extend it because one of the best ways to combo with this character is using forward air into nair. This is a talk back to where lunge is really strong. So make sure you incorporate lunge properly into some of your combos because it can be game changing at mid percents. Now, one of the best ways you want to play neutral with Finn is if you notice somebody has a jumping habit, you want to be throwing out these moves very often. His up strong and his neutral strong are both insanely good for covering these jump spammers. I'm telling you guys, people who love to play bugs and love to just jump in the air and spam down air. This is your godlike move is your neutral strong and your up strong. I prefer uh, neutral strong usually because it has a lot bigger of a hitbox. It's in front of you. And also, um, up strong can be very deceiving of a hitbox. Even though it does raise you in the air, it can make you get hit by those downers unintentionally a lot of the time. So you don't want to put yourself in a position to be in that hitbox whenever they're not even like prepared to throw it out. You know what I mean? So, highly recommend you try to use the neutral strong to anti-air really hard. Um, also, if you notice somebody is chasing you down on the ground very hard, you can also just throw out the down strong. Um, it does a lot of damage, like I said earlier, and also it's just overall really great way to zone people off. Now, let's get into some fin comps. I'm going to show some on screen. I'm going to show how to execute them. One of my favorite ones that I've shot, showed in another video is one of the easiest combos in the game to land, and it's triple downer into a backpack. The way you do this is you want to jump into it, and often, I will say, by the way, guys, downer is actually a lot harder of a move to hit um, on stage than you think. The hitbox is very honest. It's not completely dumb. Like, you won't just hit in front of you. You have to be, the opponent has to be under you. One of the worst situations to be in sometimes in this game is to be above an opponent because there's characters like Batman, there's characters like, you know, Finn, of course. There's characters like that who have great, you know, anti-airs, like they're up special usually. And it's just a great way to counter, you know, going for this down air combo. So, and only in very specific matches will you get this often, but here's the combo. You want to down air, neutral dodge, down air, neutral dodge, down air, neutral dodge, down air, neutral dodge, and then up special. And pretty consistent combo. You can also end it with a nair. And sometimes even the nair will combo out of it. You can also up air out of it. Which is also pretty good, but in my experience, it's better than Nair if you want to go for the Nair backpack. Or if you want to go for the backpack, uh, Thunder. Or you can just normal backpack, it's a lot less risky. So, that's the first combo I wanted to show you guys, very important combo to learn as Finn. Second combo to learn, I'm going to show you guys how to learn, is his up strong combos. His up strong con combos are completely just honestly up to you. You can be so creative with this character whenever it comes to combos. For some reason, it's so much harder to land like air combos on bots than it is to land on actual people because they'll usually be DIing in or out and you can react to that and know whenever they're going to dodge. So, you know, it's kind of hard to show, but a lot of the strings you'll land with this character is up strong and then nair and then forward air and stuff like that. One of the strongest combos in the game for this character that I've learned to do is up strong down air because it can combo into itself. You can do it several times. You can do this. Basically a, Z, a, a 10 to 50% combo. You won't always land the full, full you know, grunt of because some people will try to mash out of it. Some people won't and do whatever finisher you want to do after it. You get so much coins for it too. Now, while a lot of people wonder, how do you play neutral with this character? There's a lot of ways you can play it. So you can play an extremely passive fin. A lot of people will, and this is what I do in some of my games because I'm running Make It Rain Dog, is I'll play far away and just try to just pressure them with my gem. And if they try to run at me, I'll either jump up, throw downwards, and then catch them with a side B. Or sometimes I will uh, sit there and I will throw this up and then just start, you know, spamming neutral strong and stuff like that in neutrals and neutral attacks on the ground and then sometimes out of it I can side beat and start a combo because out of lunge you can get some insane combos like because one of the greatest ways to combo with this move is you can throw the gem up and then again if you catch them with a lunge you can immediately come right back with a neutral attack and it does about 12% super great way to play neutral gets you a lot of percent already just from doing a very simple combo and, and trap setup kind of so you can use gem you can also, I mean, honestly, you can just play it pretty brainless. You can literally just run at them with neutral attacks and strongs and just stay on the ground. And if you notice they're going the air a lot, again, you can use your anti-airs to catch them lacking, right? So you can just keep extending combos using forward air, nair, lunge, forward air, nair, lunge. So great way to keep combos going. Also, I love the search for early uh, up strongs because of the combo I showed you before. It's a great way to play neutral is just to literally search for upstrong because it's literally the best combo starter for Finn. It is so good. So I highly recommend you look for upstrong as well as trying to land some neutrals. 
and then again try to switch them up with some gems every once in a while. A great way to also play neutral is to use the double bounce to start combos out of it. Do a good 11% out of it, for usually. If you throw it, they double bounce, and then you roll jump at them, you can get a lot of damage and just a lot of pressure. You can usually get them off the map, depending on how high percent they are. If I'm in a high percent situation, I can throw the gem at them, forward air, and then if they try to recover low, I can usually use a down strong on them. And then I can 50-50 them, if they try to recover high, I can try to time and up strong on them. Now that we've talked about that, let's talk about kill confirms. So kill confirms are what people consider to be Finn's biggest weakness, but actually I kind of disagree. The only map you really can't kill on is Scooby's Haunted Mansion. That map is literally a curse for Finn mains, right? But one thing I will say is that he does have a lot of options to kill. So one of the best ways to kill is jab 1-2 into down strong. Uh, off, off the edge of the map, it kills pretty consistently. For example, if I can get him to... There we go. So if they're at the right or left edge of the map, you can easily just send a jab 1-2 uh, down strong and it pretty consistently will kill. Even that will kill sometimes. Even just a straight up neutral attack on the edge of the map can kill. Yeah, so it pretty consistently kills um, and sometimes they can escape jab 3 so it's good to be able to, you know, send the down strong out of it. One of the biggest bugs with this character is that if you're... If you down strong them in a certain spot, especially close to you, like if you hit them in front of whenever they're in front of you, if you have down strong, it'll connect. But sometimes whenever they're like inside of you, the, the second part will not connect. It'll only connect the first part, which usually they can't punish you for, but it's still really frustrating sometimes. Here's another kill confirm. My favorite way, and honestly the, the way I kill the most on Finn, is surprisingly his high five. Reversal high fives are so good, especially on platform maps. People do not see this coming, I'm telling you right now. If you try to be at the top of the map and then just reversal high five them, you can kill them so easily. Even though Shaggy did not die there, any most people can die at like upwards of like ninety percent to this. Especially if you're running something like Tasmanian uh, trigonometry, you will literally consistently kill people at around ninety to ninety-five percent using high five, which is really insane. So highly recommend you learn how to you know land high five pretty consistently. And the best way I recommend doing this is to bind a neutral special button because you can reverse it and use it really easily if you have the neutral special button binded. And you can switch you can literally switch directions as, as much as you want to. It's such a good move. Learn how to space it and understand that it has the most just as just as disjointed of a hitbox as the neutral attack does. Notice how this attack like hits so much. It basically has the exact same hitbox as this, but it's a kill move. It's crazy. So I highly recommend you learn how to space high five and try to hit pretty, con pretty consistently. Another kill confirm I feel like people sleep on is uh, this isn't true, but it's a nice string. You can jab one into up strong into a backpack chase, which at like 500 coins to, to like a thousand coins will kill pretty consistently past 100 percent um so highly recommend you check that out and learn how to do it it's kind of like it's kind of like jab one uppercut um batman in my opinion if you know their their dodging habits especially you'll catch people with this all the time another thing people forget about in this character is that you can actually kill with jet with four air too this actually isn't a bad kill move, and it's a great way to get people off stage high in the air so you can chase them with a gem or a backpack. Like, you won't catch, people, catch it with people every single game, but it's a kill confirm you should know, and it's honestly pretty nice to do it, like 160. If you don't have back, if you don't have high 5 charge, and you're, out of, and you're out of coins, it's not a terrible idea, and it can catch people off guard, no doubt. Honestly, I teach you guys some combos, but I feel like there are a lot, a lot of them are very freehand, is what I'm going to say. Um, people will try to make videos like, oh, all these true combos you should know, you know, etc etc but to be real with you you won't hit these on most players right most combos people will show you in game in game or in the lab you will pretty much never consistently hit right the only two i taught you are the ones that i actually think consistently are very hittable and still do a lot of damage and teach you how to make freehand combos and one of the best ways to make freehand combos with finn is forward air and air like i was saying so forward air and air out of most moves are great ways to keep combos going because you can forward air nair and then and then lunge backwards or lunge forwards and then it'll lead them like in a ladder combo way off the map basically so even though i can't hit them on the bot as often because di is just a big part of them because again di is like 90 percent of how combos end in this game di has a huge influence on this game's combos so that's why i highly recommend you guys don't really like it's good to know them because sometimes you'll be able to hit them but there's really only two or three combos on Finn you should know that consistently you'll hit and you'll want to know how to do, which again is the downer combo and the up strong combo I showed you. In this, I'm going to be talking about some tips for specific matchups in this game.
Now, in my opinion, the hardest matchups for Finn right now are Bugs, Tom and Jerry, Morty, and Harley. These are the four hardest matchups for him by far. And here's why. Harley, first of all, basically just does what Finn does, but honestly better, in my opinion. Um, even though she doesn't have the anti-gimp like gem that Finn does, which is what makes some of his matchups so good, um, she does have some insane traps. It's hard to deal with her jack-in-the-box. It's really hard to deal with some of what she does. But some great tricks you need to know about Finn is that, um, first of all, his gem can destroy most you know, trap type things. It's a really strong priority projectile. It's really good for countering Harley. Sometimes you can throw the gem at their jack in the box and then for hundred gold, you basically can destroy the jack in the box, put it on cooldown for like 20 seconds. It's pretty helpful. So highly recommend you try doing that. Also, you notice a lot of Harley will, Harleys will dig for forward airs and down airs. So learn to read those down airs and learn to predict them because they're really important to be watching out for. Honestly, it's one of the greatest ways for them to start their own combos. Bugs. His aerials are insanely good, so try to stay out of the air. Try to stay out of his um, down air. Like, try to learn his priorities because you'll notice while you're playing against them that some moves will literally just have ridiculous priority. My biggest problem with Bugs Bunny is his priorities in terms of aerials. Like, for example, like his forward air has priority over half the forward flashing moves in this game. So you'll notice that he can just roll jump a forward air and it pretty consistently will hit you. So you gotta find the moves. Um, that I cannot name off the top of my head. I usually realize them while I'm, while I'm in game against the Bugs Bunny. Um, what moves are consistently able to land against this character and what aren't? Now, Morty and Tom and Jerry, these kind of are in the same category. And honestly, my best advice is just to run them down. Realize that gem is not going to help that much because ultimately they're going to be throwing out projectiles that will kill your gem instantly. So one of the mo one of the most important ways to win this matchup is literally just using gems. So try to keep in mind the fact that you can jab one into down strong. I want to correct myself because I forgot earlier. It's jab one into down strong, not down, not jab two. I'm pretty sure they can dodge if you do jab two. And then finally, we're going to be talking about perks. So my, the best perks you should run on this character, I personally run, is on the house is easily the best one. I don't care what anybody says. Don't tell you going out of it. Let people tell you going out of business is good because on the house is insane. You can land some crazy ladder combos with this, especially with fully charged up strongs. Dude, you get ridiculous combos with that thing. I'm telling you guys. So highly recommend that you run that. I run trigonometry because here's what I think. I think that personally, you're not going to really find many kills with this character unless you're running this because it does a, just a ridiculous amount of influence into your into your high fives into your lunges into your backpack that it's just a game changer not running it i've noticed that whenever i don't run this perk i don't kill very well so highly recommend that you run this it's a big game changer triple jump is a no-brainer because you know you do have a lot of those aerial strings you need to be able to keep up with and triple jump does that perfectly and i think that this is a necessary perk these two are personal preference but i highly recommend them but yeah triple jump is really strong make it rain duck this is a controversial perk because not many other high rank fin fins run this perk i run it because it is super hard to react to i feel like whenever you're not running this perk let's say i'm running collateral damage for whatever reason right the gem is a lot more predictable notice how far notice how far it goes on the ground it's it's barely even an anti it's barely even an, an anti-zoner at that point like, sure the gem goes, or sure the apple goes somewhat farther, but just, it does not do enough. And even whenever you do the the normal down B, it does nothing. But, uh, the thing about Make It Rain Dog is that not only does it have increased projectile speed, it goes farther. And this is why I like this perk so much, is because not only does it give you extra space you can cover, look at that. Just look at that. It's a game changer. It literally is a cr almost a cross map projectile you can throw and if they're in the air look at that they can't it's like the safe trajectory except it's smaller hitbox so make it rain dog is so good because it's a it makes your down your down special so much better and i'm telling you guys this is a slept on perk i'm telling you guys i recommend you try it it's really nice and it makes his mobility just that much better but if you really don't think i'm right for running this perk I recommend you could run one of his utility perks. Like you could run air acceleration, for example. Air acceleration is something I've been considering running, but still haven't decided to. You can run something that makes his projectile better, like Ice to Beat You or that's Flammable Dock. And of course, if you're playing as a zoner character, you can always just use a um, perk that counters projectiles. For example, something like Clear the Air 
or school me once for example right so that's what i recommend for 1v1 fin not too sure about 2v2 2v2 fin but honestly that's all the tips i have for you guys today hope you guys enjoyed today's video it's very long i understand that but i wanted to make it again just to show you some proof i'm top nine percent with this character top eight percent actually i'm pretty sure trying to get to top 500 with them i'll write in the comments any extra tips i have i might even make a part two if i feel like i learn a lot more about this character but that's pretty much the basics for you guys hope you guys enjoyed today's video hope you guys learned something new if you're a fin main out there who's trying to get better at the character and then those who just watch to find out how to play him if they play him casually i hope you guys enjoyed all the tips i had in today's video and uh signing off peace out y'all